Okay, so we're in this chapter one of the control text, and it's just sort of an overview introduction, and actually today we will cover the whole of chapter one. Um, there's really not a lot to it, it's just like conceptually what we're talking about, giving you like an idea of where we're headed. So, in the last um, sort of intro to the intro chapter um, that we discussed on Monday, we said that uh, one of the main things that a control system designer is concerned about is performance, performance of the control system. And that's uh, what we'll talk about in overview today, and we're going to go through over the next few weeks in detail some of these performance characteristics. So, it's measured in the following ways. First is stability. So a control system must be designed such that the plant's output response is stable. Its free response must eventually approach zero, or it must eventually approach an oscillation with a constant amplitude. That would be marginally stable, right, based on the definitions we've discussed previously of stability. So when you put the controller in, so we talked about when you design a system, preferably it's stable, but sometimes the system is unstable to start. Maybe there's some inherent reason why it has to be unstable to start. Um, but then when you put feedback control on it, like we'll do, we want it to be stable then, at least, right? So even if you have an unstable system, we can stabilize it oftentimes with a control system. The, uh, I guess, quintessential example of that is the inverted pendulum problem. Are you familiar with that one? So it's when you balance something. Well, look at this. Look at this. Visual engagement. Look at this. Look at that. Uh, pe ver uh, so like if you balance like a broom on your hand, it's like a three-dimensional inverted pendulum, right? Uh, so the idea is a pendulum swings like this and it's stable, but if you flip it up, then it does not want to stay balanced, right? If you perturb it at all and you don't do anything to catch it, it's just going to fall. So an inverted pendulum is an unstable system, but if you put a controller on it that's so trying to balance it, say that's like feeding back what the angle is, and it's moving the base so that it, the angle is small, um, you can make that into a stable system in closed loop. So stability is a very important thing. And that's, like, that's like if you can't make your system stable, your control system stable, then the other performance characteristics don't really matter. Like you could have the best transient response characteristics ever, but if your stability is not there, then nobody cares. So, yeah. All right. Stability is number one. So we'll talk about stability in more detail. We already talked about it a little bit, but we'll talk about what it means when you have a controller in there specifically um, in the coming weeks. Transient response is the next one. So transient response of the plant's output is often important for a control system. Let's remember what a transient response is for a moment transient response is the part of the response before it reaches a steady state right so it's often due to uh, some initial condition right so if you have an initial condition that is non-zero and you set your system in motion uh, before it reaches some steady state, it's got to have some, maybe some uh, decay or oscillating decay or some, something else um, to uh, the steady state. So that's the transient response. So we care about how the system goes from its initial condition to its steady state condition. That's one of our performance characteristics um, or one of our performance metrics. So... Uh, a designer may have identified such requirements as the velocity free response must be zero plus or minus one meters per second in five seconds and thereafter. That might be the type of 
requirement that a designer would set. Um, when you're a designer, you're, you're, the design process includes saying, okay, what do I want? Like, what are like the features I want for this system? And then what are the performance requirements? What are the, the requirements? And this, this word is a very uh, specific word used a lot in engineering. What are the requirements for our system? And this sort of statement here is, is a transient response performance uh, 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 requirement. Another example would be the pressure step response must not overshoot its final value. Maybe this is a um, fluid system and you're going to be pressurizing some tank, but you want to be sure never to increase the pressure beyond what the steady state value will be. You don't want it to overshoot. Um, maybe there's a safety reason why uh, you wouldn't want that. So that would be a requirement, a sort of a, a design requirement. Um, and these sorts of transient response requirements are common. As with many design techniques, some iteration is usually needed in order to meet all the requirements. So we'll start off, we'll use these different techniques to try to meet these requirements, but uh, a lot of times we'll start off with a design, check it, okay, it doesn't quite meet the design requirements, let's tweak something, and maybe it'll throw off another requirement, so then we have to iterate a little bit. So. Okay, steady state response. Steady state response of the plant's output is another important consideration for a control system. After the transient response has decayed, the steady state response must meet certain criteria, such as, here's an example, the position steady state response of a unit ramp function must be within five millimeters of the desired position. That would be a position control steady state response example. So even when you have a controller in the system, for some, for some uh, uh, con uh, commanded outputs from, the, control, or from the, the, the plant, we don't get a perfect steady state response. It doesn't go exactly there. If we say go to you know, a certain position, go to position X, it's going to get you close to position X, but oftentimes there's a little bit of steady state error, even when it's it's done trying to make you go there. So that steady state error is something we have to worry about too. Um, and we'll talk about how that works mathematically um, uh, in the coming weeks as well. Others that we would want to consider are cost, weight, complexity, and, and many other factors. Uh, one of the most important of these is robustness. Okay? The control system's ability to perform as desired when system parameters change from their nominal values, okay? So say you design, you build a control system, but say uh, uh, the, when they, uh, the, the people who are building the system actually go out there, well, they didn't have a, uh, a valve that was exactly the valve you specified, so they used one that was similar, the resist that the, maybe the, the fluid resistance lump parameter resistance would be slightly different for that valve than the one that you specified. You would like there to be some robustness to the, to the design so that okay, like they didn't use exactly the right valve, but it's not going to cause anything catastrophic with our uh, uh, control system. Like we're not going to since they use that valve, we're not going to like break the pipe because there's a huge pressure spike because we're so sensitive to some small change. Because in the real world, a lot of these things are going to change a little bit. So we need to be pretty robust if we're going to do uh, make good designs. By the way, I mean, this is horrible, but did you guys see that, that news story about that water slide? Okay, like, the kid got to have on the water slide? That was awful. So, like, first of all, yeah, so like there's a water slide that somebody designed, and, and, and there's like all this stuff coming out about the designer not being an engineer stuff. Bad. But, but this is a really good example of uh, failure. I mean, even if it was designed, let's just pretend I don't think it was uh, uh, like, like calculated, like what the height they could get off of the, um, the problem was that the raft got airborne 
and they had like a, a uh, mesh around it to keep people from flying off, which, I mean, is the most obviously dangerous thing ever. When you're going really fast, slamming into that is going to be catastrophic. There are like all these crossbars and netting. Like when you hit it, it's just going to, if you're going really fast, it's going to just destroy you. So, yeah. And there were tons of injuries, tons of injuries on it before that. And they still had people riding it. It's crazy. But uh, what's, what, I think this is a, a good example because the, uh, apparently that specific raft was known by the park employees as going faster than the others, and they had taken it out of commission a couple of times and research, and they brought it back in. This is the type of thing where if you do the calculation, you're like, oh, well, they won't get more than, you know, this high off of the, uh, you know, if this is the weight and this is the whatever, they were never going to get higher than this off of the slide. They won't get very airborne. But if maybe that raft, whatever it was, maybe that raft was heavier, or it was lighter, or whatever it was that made it uh, uh, get more airborne, and go faster, um, that is a, a sort of robustness to your design uh, 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 consideration. So if it's susceptible, if your calculation is susceptible to a small change in a parameter, like maybe the mass of the raft, then that's not a very good design. Like if, oh, if the difference um, in your calculation of the height you could get off of the slide changes by, if you say, a 10% change in the raft weight, gives you a, you know, 40% change in the height that you get off of it, uh, which wouldn't surprise me in this case if that was what happened, then that's not a very robust design. And I think that um, even though I don't think this guy was an engineer who had a lot to say about this design, uh, we can learn a lot from seeing this where it's like probably somebody sat down and did a calculation at some point, hopefully, about what height you could get off of it, but probably it wasn't a very robust calculation because one of the rafts apparently didn't behave like the other rafts. So, yeah. There's a 10 year old kid who got clipped, so. Yeah. But that, wouldn't that just be like the parameter there wouldn't be the raft, wouldn't it be like the weight of the riders and how it's distributed on the raft? That, that, that's another one that would need to be considered, yeah. And there, I think that, yeah, there's like three people on each raft and the they vary in rafts. weight. Yeah. And then, yeah, there, the other two people were injured too, but the kid, probably what it was, was the, you know, the kid's gonna get more of the, well, if you impart some momentum on that kid, um, they're gonna go further than the adult will up in the air, so, yeah. So it's pretty, I mean, it's horrific, but I do think it's a good example of also like a mechanical engineering sort of thing where you've got dynamics involved, right? Um, so some people talk about, like, oh, well, Emmys, like, we build weapons and not whatever. It's like, civils build targets, that, that's kind of crap people talk about. But there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things that an Emmy would be involved in, hopefully, like a dynamic calculation like this, um, that can be dangerous to people, not on purpose dangerous to people, right? So I think it's uh, just, it's sobering, but it's, it's important to call these out. As we're talking about robustness today, I just wanted to bring that up. It's on my mind. Okay, uh, so it's important because the parameters of an, any implementation of a control system will differ from their nominal values at least slightly. Okay. So that's all for this lecture. Any questions before we go on to the next?